Hi, welcome back. This is the second presentation for gynecologic cytopathology. My name is Natalie Benet. Today I'll be covering atypical squamous cells, including um, atypical squamous cells of uncertain significance, or the ASCUS diagnosis, and atypical cells of uncertain significance cannot exclude high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or ASCH. So once again, the source for the lecture material, unless otherwise noted, is the Bethesda System for Reporting Cervical Cytology, which in case you didn't um, tune in for the first lecture, um, the aim of the Bethesda system was to be clinically relevant, reasonably reproducible and flexible, and reflect the most current understanding of cervical neoplasia, and was convened for the first time in 1988 following public outcry over these pap mills, which were um, processing specimens in less than optimal conditions with not reproducible findings and patients were not having good outcomes. Um, the photos in the lecture come from mainly three sources. One is photos that I've taken um, here at home in the status post-COVID world where I take them with my iPhone on my com um, microscope so you can see those and then there are some from um, my mentors at Johns Hopkins who have agreed to share them, where, and I've noted that. And then also some of them I found on the um, online atlas, which I also referenced, and that's a good um, place. But be a little careful with some of the online images. Um, so in general, the atypical squamous cell diagnosis does not represent a single biologic entity. It includes changes that are unrelated to HPV infection and neoplasia, as well as findings that suggest a possible pre presence of an underlying squamous intraepithelial lesion and rarely carcinoma. Numerous non-neoplastic conditions, including inflammation, air drying, atrophy with degeneration, hormonal effects, and other artifacts also fit in this category. And in many instances, even with follow-up, the etiology of the atypical diagnosis is never really um, known. However, approximately 40 to 50% of women with this diagnosis show infection with a high-risk type of HPV. The atypical squamous cell diagnosis is the most prevalent of all abnormal cervical cytology in interpretations. The category of ASCUS refers to changes that are suggestive but not diagnostic of low grade, which is how I kind of think of it in general, although like I said, like, like I mentioned before, it's also a bigger category. Approximately 10 to 20% of women with ASCUS prove to have an underlying high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion on biopsy. So that's important to know. And also ASCUS is expected of the atypical squamous cell diagnosis should be about 90% of the diagnoses in that category. The ASC-H category is reserved for, for atypical cases which are sort of suggestive but not diagnostic of high grade um, on pap smear. And ASC-H cases are associated with a higher positive predictive value for, under, for detecting an underlying um, high grade on biopsy but less predictive than the diagnosis of high grade on PAP for predicting such a thing, which makes sense. Some argue that the equivocal nature of the ASC category is problematic, and people have talked in the past about eliminating it. However, people have crunched the numbers, and when you do that, it diminishes the sensitivity of the PAP smear test, which is at its heart a screening test, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to catch um, preneoplastic changes of the cervix. And this is something that I remind myself of when I, especially when I'm looking at a lot of tissue biopsies, because ASC or atypical squamous cells is the most um, prevalent of normal category. It's also the interpretation that precedes the majority of identified high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions on biopsy. So keep that in mind. Atypical squamous cells refers to cytologic changes um, the, which are insufficient for a def, um, definitive interpretation, and it requires diagnostic cells to have three things, squamous differentiation, increased NC ratios, and minimal nuclear changes, including hyperchromasia, chromatin clumping, irregularity, smudging, and sometimes multinucleation. So specifically speaking to the ASCUS category, or the atypical squamous cells of uncertain significance, the nuclei are approximately two and a half to three times the area of the nucleus of a normal intermediate squamous cell or twice the size of a squamous metaplastic cell nucleus. And slightly increased ratio of nuclear to cytoplasmic area, 
minimal nuclear hypercremasia slash irregularity in the chromatin distribution and nuclear abnormalities. These are more um, a specific category, the atypical perikeratosis, which we'll talk about on a separate slide. And then you can also see incomplete coelocytosis, including poorly defined cytoplasmic halos or cytoplasmic vacuoles with absent or sort of less than optimal nuclear changes, which you were sort of saying you can't quite get to low grade there. This interpretation can be problematic in the setting of diffuse mild changes throughout the pap smear, accompanying reactive or reparative changes, microorganisms, air drying, atrophy, and other artifacts. In such cases, the patient's age, history, previous specimens, and concurrent HPV testing can be taken into account. But the prevalence of this diagnosis declines with increasing age, as does the prevalence of HPV infection. So, um, though you can use their previous history to inform your diagnosis, you should take care and not only make this diagnosis in younger patients because you think HPV is more common in, in younger patients. It's sort of sick like you have to be careful. This is an example of an ASCUS diagnosis noted at the arrow where we see incomplete coelocytosis. It is by a binucleated cell, but the cytoplasmic halo is sort of poorly formed and there's not really good nuclear enlargement noted in that cell. These are two other examples of an ASCUS diagnosis with slightly increased ratio of nuclear to cytoplasmic area and minimal nuclear hyperchromasia, but no real good irregularity um, in the nuclear outline or the chromatin distribution. And I just wanted to remind everyone and the I, I, don't, I mean, you could, this is subjective, but about two to two and a half nuclei fit on the right-hand side. I put two, but it could be about two and a half. And about two and a half to three on the left-hand side. Um, I just reminded in the first lecture I did about intermediate cells and normal components of, this, of the pap smear. You always want to try to compare them. And in my head, I actually fit circles into circles. So that's kind of what I was trying to do. You can see before and after. So just keep this in mind when you're doing... Um, pap smears, try to find a, the ruler, which is what I think of the intermediate cell as the ruler. This is another example of an ASCA cell where you have increased NC ratios and some changes of the chromatin, but no really good um, HPV change or irregularity of the nuclear membrane. Another one here, this cell almost looks a little bit metaplastic. And once you start seeing metaplastic cells, you might worry about an ASCH diagnosis, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but there's too much cytoplasm in the cell. The NC ratio is, is not that significantly increased, so an ASCH diagnosis is appropriate here as well. This is another example. This is a binucleate cell. It looks a little bit metaplastic, but it's kind of degenerated. The nuclear outlines aren't... Um, very irregular, and then the chromatin to me is more vesicular than clumped. So specific examples of categories within the ASCUS diagnosis, we sort of just looked at slides, which are more, the more typical ASCUS diagnosis that I think of, but this is an example of something called atypical repair, which shows reparative changes that show some nuclear overlap and discohesion. They can have anisonucleocytosis, plus or minus loss of nuclear polarity, and this can fit within the ASCUS diagnosis when you see this in sheets, but then the individual cells have changes which qualify as ASCUS. And in this group of patients, squamous intraepithelial lesion can be pretty high in high-risk populations, but much lower in low-risk populations. This is an example of what we call atypical perikeratosis. So there are cells with dense orangophilic or eosinophilic cytoplasm and small pycnotic nuclei. And these should be classified as normal if the nuclei appear normal. However, if the nuclei have hyperchromasia, irregular um, outlines of the nuclei, or if they appear in three-dimensional clusters like that noted here, you can call it ASCUS. Of course, if you see changes that look like low grade or that look like high grade in areas like this, you can also make that diagnosis. But just know that atypical perikeratosis um, is not in and of itself a diagnosis. Many of these cases, however, do fit into the ASCUS category. So now we'll move on to the ASCH category. You can have two patterns, basically. There are 
the small cell with the high NC ratio or the atypical immature metaplasia pattern or the crowded sheet pattern. We'll go over the first pattern first. So the small cell with high NC ratio or the atypical immature metaplasia. The cells usually occur with um, singly or in small groups of less than 10 cells and they're Cells are the size of a metaplastic cell with nuclei that are about 1.5 to 2.5 times larger than a normal metaplastic cell nucleus, and the NC ratios can be can approach that of high grade. So you shouldn't see very much cytoplasm. And within the differential diagnosis versus the high grade, um, nuclear findings of hyperchromasia, chromatin irregularity, and abnormal nuclear shapes with irregularity favor an interpretation of high grade. So here's an example of ASK-H. We have isolated small cells with an increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and some prominent nuclear irregularity with some degeneration present, and that should be a period. You can tell I've been using the dictation feature. Sorry about that. Um, and then this is another example, very similar, some degenerative changes, but they're small and they're single, and they do make you worry about high grade. Um, similar findings here in this one, and in the background you can actually see some other metaplastic cells. This is an example of the crowded sheet pattern. Um, the crowded sheet pattern, um, or the um, this overall diagnosis, can can represent many things. It can be glandular, it can be reactive, but in this ask H category, you would see a sheet of crowded squamous cells containing nuclei that show atypical features, including loss of polarity, they're difficult to visualize, they have dense cytoplasm with polygonal cell shapes, and fragments with sharp linear edges. And so we think that these are squamous and not glandular. And then a very crowded sheet pattern can reflect high grade, it can reflect reactive changes, or atrophy with crush artifacts. So you really have to be careful when you see these. And sometimes um, or people think that they're probably just like direct tissue sampling from a vigorous pap smear. Um, it's just important when you're looking at pap smears and you see these hyperchromatic crowded groups, or especially on a test, um, to look at the edges and focus up and down. Usually if they're going to put these images on an exam, they'll make sure to show you cells at the edge that give you a clue as to the origin of the cells and the diagnosis that they're trying to get you too. So just in closing, I wanted to mention briefly quality monitoring in the ASC category. Um, I plan on doing a lecture at some point in the future about quality monitoring in cytopathology because it's so important and it's also such a big topic. But when you're thinking about ASCUS, it's important to know that the ASC to squamous intraepithelial ratio and the percentage of patients with high-risk HPV positivity are commonly used as benchmarks for quality assurance in cervical cytology. And you can not only use them lab-wide, you can also use them in individual practitioners, in um, cytotechnologists, also in um, cytopathologists and patholo in physicians. So the um, a trial, the ALTS trial reported that the high-risk that should be HPV positivity in ASCUS by experienced pathologists was about 50.6%. However, in general practice, it ranges from about 40 to 50%. So that's a good number to keep in mind. And then also in the U.S., the median reported ASC to squamous intraepithelial ratio is 1.5. For labs that have a high risk population, the ratio should not be higher than 3 to 1. So that is something that labs keep track of, not only in general, but also individual practitioners. And a higher ratio suggests that perhaps the diagnosis of ASC is being overused. However, it should also be noted that you can't just use one parameter. You have to look at all of them and also um, other things because if people are overdiagnosing ASC and SIL, then their ratio would be fine, but they would still maybe not be um, doing the best, best work. So that's all for this um, presentation. I hope you th that you found it useful. If you have any feedback, please reach out to me and let me know. And um, good luck out there and stay safe, everyone.